Qua Tang and Wan, my people, and welcome to the Complete Guide to Harrow. This is a detailed look at the Dark Priest, which includes frame acquisition, ability analysis, gameplay tips, and multiple build options. And just in case you lack the self-control necessary to watch the entire video, Catholics want their priests to be the kind of people they don't have the discipline to be. I've included chapter markers in the timeline so you can quickly jump to the different sections. Harrow is now available in two variants, Prime and Non-Prime. The Prime version is superior as it comes with an additional V polarity as well as increased base shields and max energy. As of this video's posting, relics containing Harrow Prime's blueprint and component blueprints are not vaulted, which means you can earn them through missions where they drop or by purchasing relic packs from various syndicates. As for the non-prime version, its main blueprint is rewarded upon completion of the Chains of Harrow quest, while the component blueprints come from various locations. For the Neuroptics BP, you'll need to head to Kuva Fortress, either the spy mission on Pago for a 16.67% drop chance, or 20 minutes of survival at Tavayuni for a 12% drop chance. However, that 20 minute rotation on Tavayuni also has a 12% chance to drop the system's blueprint. The other place you can get the system's BP is any of the defection missions, Memphis Phobos, Caracal Saturn, or Yursa Neptune. I know some people hate defection missions, but Wisp makes them ridiculously simple. Just set up your reservoirs near the life support unit so the defectors pass through and pick up the moats. Now, when you send them off, they'll receive bonus move speed from the haste moat, bonus HP and healing from the vitality moat, and AoE CC from the shock moat. Just don't make the common noob mistake of following the defectors around, as this only draws more enemies near them. Just smile and wave, boys. Exactly. The chassis is a random drop from Void Fissure enemies, and if you've ever run Void Relics before, you probably already have a few of them in your inventory. Now, if you watched my Nidus video, you may remember how I talked about the beautiful synergy of his entire kit. Harrow may be an even better example of abilities working in concert, and it all starts with his passive, which allows him to generate double the amount of overshields as other frames. He also starts missions with energy completely filled, but note that this doesn't work in Sanctuary Onslaught or anywhere else the mod preparation would be inactive. Condemn is what allows Harrow to generate those overshields. He sends a wave of energy in a cone AoE from his location, in the direction you're aiming, and enemies caught in the AoE are locked in place. Harrow receives 150 shield points per chained enemy, but this number scales with ability strength. Its augment, Tribunal, allows allies to proc half the effects of two other Harrow abilities when they attack chained enemies, but those abilities need to be active for this to work. It requires a bit of team coordination to get real value out of it, and Warframe groups are usually four people soloing the same mission, not working together. Penance gives us something to use those massive overshields for, other than survivability, obviously. Harrow self-flagellates twice, removing half of his current shield amount each time. This grants Harrow a burst heal based on the amount of shield sacrificed, plus 35% fire rate for ranged and melee weapons, and plus 70% reload speed. Additionally, Harrow gains lifesteal while Penance is active. 5% of all damage he deals is converted into HP for both Harrow and allies within his affinity range. We have got to pray, yeah! Pray! We have got to pray, yeah! Pray! We have got to pray to make it through the day, yeah! Is that MC Hammer? You're healed, right? Thurible grants Harrow and nearby allies a virtually limitless supply of energy. Casting the ability causes Harrow to channel his existing energy pool into the Thurible until he either runs out of energy or you press the ability key a second time to end the channel. Harrow then gains a buff, which restores energy to both Harrow and nearby allies each time he kills an enemy. The amount of energy gained per kill scales with strength, efficiency, and the amount of energy channeled initially. Additionally, headshot kills grant four times the energy. These violent delights have violent ends. The Warding Thurible Augment grants scaling damage reduction to both Harrow and nearby allies, as well as additional energy each time you take damage, but only while actively channeling energy into the Thurible. Covenant is another two-phase buff-generating ability. Casting it grants Harrow and allies within affinity range complete invulnerability to damage and status effects for a short duration. When the first phase ends, any damage that was prevented is converted into an additive crit chance buff called Retaliation. 
The total crit chance bonus is capped at 50% on body shots, but 200% on headshots. Its lasting covenant augment increases the ability's remaining duration each time you get a headshot kill. This amount scales with duration, but is capped at three times Covenant's modded duration. It provides a great way to maintain your crit chance bonus indefinitely, but it also means you can't take advantage of Covenant's invulnerability period regularly, since you can't recast Covenant while it's active. And hey, if you've heard people talking about additive versus multiplicative bonuses, but you've never really understood the difference or even why the distinction is important... Mind your own fucking business. Wait, what? No. No, no, no. No, I was gonna say, this is a good opportunity for me to explain. Let's look at, I don't know, Tenet Detron for this example, which has a base crit chance of 18%. Primed Pistol Gambit gives us plus 187% crit chance. And if this were an additive bonus, it would put total crit chance at 205%. But as you can see, when we add it to our build, crit chance only goes up to 51.7%, and that's because the mod actually provides a multiplicative bonus. This means that our base crit chance of 18 is multiplied by 187%, or 1.87, in order to calculate the bonus. And if you're wondering why there's an addition symbol on the mod card if it isn't an additive bonus, that symbol just means that the multiplicative bonus the mod provides, 33.7% in this case, is added to the base crit chance to get our final value of 51.7%. So now that you understand the difference, you can see how Prime Pistol Gambit's multiplicative bonus of 187% is actually less valuable for this weapon than Covenant's additive 50% bonus. Additive's edge over multiplicative decreases as the base value increases, but even with a weapon like Lens, which has the highest base crit chance in the game at 50%, a point of additive bonus is still worth two points of multiplicative. And before I jump into the builds, I want to cover Harrow's general playstyle since many people consider him difficult to understand. That's not quite what I meant, but uh, anyway. What you need to know about Harrow is that all of his abilities rely on each other, and all require a bit of thought before using. The way I manage his cooldowns is like this. He uses one to generate some overshields, then I cast four to become invulnerable. Now I can safely remove all shields with two, cast one again to get new shields, and then use the remaining invulnerability window of Covenant to channel his three. That allows me to get all buffs up and running without putting myself in any danger. Covenant has a much shorter duration than the other buffs, so my next rotation is usually just four to maintain crit chance, and then I go back to the full rotation on the next one. Between rotations, you obviously want to use this one as needed to maintain shields, and be sure to go for some headshots to make the most of your buffs. You should also know that, despite having a passive that allows for 200% overshields, an ability that generates shields, and another with lifesteal, Harrow's not an extremely tanky frame. This is partly due to him not having any form of damage reduction, but also because his lifesteal doesn't seem to proc regularly enough to keep up with incoming damage. As you can see here, I have my two buff active, and I'm doing plenty of damage, but if I move ahead a few frames, I'm still losing HP and not getting any lifesteal. And if I move ahead a little more, it's the same story. And again, well, now I'm dead. So, if you want to do some extended steel path, do your best to use the environment to your advantage, and don't just stand out in the open where you'll get hit by every spawn on the map. You'll need a priest to pray over your body. See you in church. And finally, we get to my builds. Or maybe you skipped ahead and came straight to the builds. If you did, you missed out on a nerd alert, so was it really worth it? Hmm, probably not. Anyway, first up is, of course, a starter build. And as such, I've designed it to fit into regular Harrow without any Forma or an Orkin Reactor. It also doesn't rely on a Helmet Ability Swap or any Arcanes. I've chosen Sprint Boost here, but the Aura doesn't matter all that much. Just pick one with Naramon Polarity that sounds good to you and move on. I'm not worried about adding range because, despite the fact that Harrow has support abilities, he behaves more as a support for himself more than anyone else in most situations. On top of that, both Covenant and Penance work with affinity range rather than ability range, and Thurible's base range of 20 meters is already pretty generous. Extra efficiency is also somewhat unnecessary, since Thurible gives us an unlimited supply of energy for all intents and purposes. Strength, on the other hand, is quite important, as it determines the lifesteal, bonus fire rate, and bonus reload speed of Penance, the energy conversion efficiency of Thurible, 
and the bonus crit chance per 100 damage of Covenant. As for duration, continuity and Augur message should be plenty. I've got a partially ranked vitality to provide some tankiness if and when your shields drop, and flow is here because Harrow's base energy pool is poo poo. Up next, I have a build for people who actually enjoy making the rest of the squad look good. I'm not convinced that supports actually exist, but in case you do, here you go. We sacrifice efficiency because as long as you keep your three up and running, energy shouldn't be an issue. We go heavy on power strength because it benefits all of our buffs, while investing moderately in both range and duration. I'm using Nera's Hatred here because it fits in the depolarity I needed for the other build, but it's a nice bump to health while getting some duration. If you don't have this mod yet, just pop Augur Message here instead. The Aura Slot and Arcanes are a matter of preference, and I don't find a Helminth swap to be necessary for this setup, so you've got quite a bit of flexibility. And the final build utilizes Hildren's Pillage in place of Condemn. This gives us the shields and overshields Harrow relies on, while also providing enemy shield slash armor strip. This setup also allows me to play around with shield gating in a way I find enjoyable. It's better than ice cream. It's better than springtime. It's better than sex. <laughs> no, I, I've heard. Well, not that enjoyable. But uh, anyway, I try to always keep pillage in an active state by activating the ability to send its wave out. Then I go about my business. If and when shield gating is procced, I tap the ability a second time, which brings the wave back to me and refreshes my shields. Natural Talent is here primarily to cut the cast time of Pillage, but other abilities benefit from it too. And Rolling Guard provides the oh shit button we all need from time to time. Since Pillage doesn't care about range the way Condemn does, and we're only concerned about providing buffs for ourselves, we can tank range while going all in on strength and duration. This means we not only get longer and stronger buffs, but we also get 63% strip from each cast of Pillage. And we need Steel Charge in the Aura slot for the extra mod capacity. And Prime Sure Footed lets us stay upright no matter what, since, as I mentioned earlier, all of Harrow's tankiness comes from him being active. As for the Arcanes, they're completely optional, but I like Precision and Pistolier. I'm going for headshots anyway to take advantage of the 4x crit chance bonus to headshots from Covenant, but also the extra energy on headshot kills from Thurible. So it just makes sense to get extra damage on headshots from Precision and 100% ammo efficiency from Pistolier. I like to pair this with a Rattleguts kit gun set up specifically to benefit from headshots. Arcane Seeker creates extra head-seeking projectiles on headshot kills, and these projectiles benefit from Condemn's retaliation buff. Secondary Deadhead gives more base damage, a larger headshot multiplier, and reduces recoil on headshot kills. And Galvanized Crosshairs grants up to 320% additional crit chance on headshot kills, while Sharpened Bullets gives plus 75% crit damage on kill. Just remember that you need to be aiming for these two to take effect. And there you go. Have any questions? Think I missed something big? Want to complain about how awful the holidays are? I never felt so much like Christmas in all my life. Don't you, Sherry, dear? Shut your nasty little face. Yeah, same, buddy. Leave a comment below or hit me up on the Twitter. And don't forget that you can find all of my builds at Apocryphate.com. Happy Harrow Days, everyone.